Hello, America. I'm Mark Levin. This is Life, Liberty, and Levin. I have two great guests tonight. David Limbaugh, how are you, sir? Right, how are you? Andy McCarthy, it's a pleasure. Mark, great to see you. Well, David Limbaugh, you're my lawyer. One of many. No, 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 just <laughs> Andy McCarthy. We're all buddies here, but we're going to talk about a very serious subject. Andy McCarthy, you served as Assistant United States Attorney for the Southern District of New York. Some of your notable cases, 1995, you were the lead prosecutor, Sheikh Omar Abdurrahman, and 11 others. The defendants were convicted of the 1993 World Trade Center bombing and planning a series of attacks against New York City landmarks. And you've written four books. You're writing your fifth book. They're excellent books. You also write for National Review, among other uh, 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 publications. You're a senior fellow at the National Review Institute. David Limbo. Uh, You've been practicing law for over 30 years. You're a nationally syndicated columnist with creators. Um, you're a political commentator. You're also a New York Times best-selling author. You have eight books. You're working on your ninth book. Uh, and in law school, you went to the University of Missouri, and you run law review there. Now I'm nervous. I've got two very impressive men here. <laughs> but we want to get into some very serious matters here and very timely matters. This investigation that's going on, these activities related to the President of the United States, his campaign, his transition. And I wanted to talk to you fellows about that tonight. We know this for a fact. There was, in fact, a FISA warrant. It was extended three times. Uh, there was, in fact, a dossier that was paid for, ultimately, by the Hillary Clinton campaign and the Democrat National Committee. We know for a fact that dossier in Parter Hall was used to get an application, to file an application for a warrant in the FISA court and extensions in the FISA court. We know as a matter of fact, thanks really to the New York Times, which now has tried to walk it back, that there was a spy, if you will, a confidential informant, or as the late great James Comey put it, a human resource uh, who was in the Trump campaign. I mean, Professor Stephen Halpert was in the Trump campaign. He interviewed a number of people. Um, let me start with you, Andy McCarthy. You've been around a while. You've prosecuted these cases we talked about. You were an assistant United States attorney. We hear media outlets and others say, well, first of all, it's not a spy, and second of all, the vice is not a big deal, and thirdly, of course, we needed to get to the bottom of this Russia thing. What's the big deal? Trey Gowdy said this is exactly what the American people would want from the FBI. How do you respond to that? I don't think so. Um, you know, I, I think, Mark, all of the... Um the back and forth about whether it's a spy or an informant is really beside the point. When I was a prosecutor, the informants worked for us. So when I spoke to the jury during a case, I would call them the informants. And then the, F the defense lawyers would get up and speak to the same jury about the same guys and call them the spies, the snitches, the finks, whatever. It, it, it's their government-controlled covert operatives who you send in to get information, regardless of what you call them. And the important thing always is why you sent them in, not what you call what they're doing, whether you want to be hyperbolic or, or use euphemisms about it. And I think, with all due respect to, uh, to, to uh, Congressman Gowdy, I don't think the American people would be happy with the idea that the norm we've had in this country, I, I think from the beginning of this country, but certainly in the modern era since Watergate, that the incumbent administration does not use the awesome counterterrorism and law enforcement powers that it has to monitor the opposition party in an electoral campaign is a norm the American people would like to keep in place. And Gowdy is simply wrong when he says that the object here was to monitor the activities of a few tangential players that had kind of tenuous connections to the Trump campaign. It was said explicitly in congressional testimony a number of times by former director Comey that the FBI was conducting an investigation of the Trump campaign for coordinating in Russia's cyber espionage operations. Wasn't Trey Gowdy uh, among those? members of Congress on the committee listening to the testimony firsthand of Mr. Yeah. Comey? Yeah, he certainly was. In fact, he, the, the, 
best known testimony is the testimony Comey gave on March 20th of 2017, which is important because it's the jumping off point, as it turns out, for Mueller's, special counsel Mueller's investigation. This is what Mueller took over. And what Comey described was a counterintelligence investigation aimed at Russia's interference in the election and the extent to which the Trump campaign was suspected of coordinating in that effort. And David Limbaugh, the focus is the Trump campaign. All of a sudden we're hearing, no, 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 it's just an investigation of the Russians. So where is this argument coming from? Is it because they've now been caught or they've had to confess some of these activities that have been taking place? Well, it sure is very suspicious. Uh, we all start out with a presumption that the FBI and DOJ are honorable institutions. And we being conservatives, we, we support law enforcement apparatus, and, and that's our bias, until we see things that concern us. I think we need to remember at the outset that liberals, by and large, are ends justify the means. They politicize things. They're willing to, and not willing, they're anxious to subordinate the rule of law to their political agenda. That's what makes a lot of this stuff believable. They, Obama weaponized the IRS to target conservatives. He, he politicized the EPA to a disgusting extent. We can even go back to Bill Clinton uh, putting uh, Bill Lan Lee in the Civil Rights Division of the Justice Department and all that activism occurring in the very institution that is supposed to be objective and, and keep justice honest. So I, I start off with that presumption. Then you look at all the things, regardless of whether uh, Trey Gowdy, who I have respect for, of course, uh, regardless of whether there was a technical spy or informant in the campaign, regardless of whether they have convinced him that they weren't investigating Trump, then why did James Comey go out of his way, make a fool of himself, a jerk of himself, an unprofessional person of himself, to leak, to start a special counsel investigation? You don't have special counsel against Russian entities. You have special counsels to investigate higher-ups in the in the. Uh, executive branch, i.e. the president. That's the explicit purpose of it. So why did Comey uh, leak to start that? Why was it necessary if what Trey Gowdy says uh, is true, and I'm not saying it's in anything he says is not true, but I'm saying in terms of how he, he's emphasizing this, why did they need to dummy up the FISA application? If they had a bunch of stuff to make them suspicious about Trump campaign and, and the FBI, why did they use the dossier, which was all bogus, 50 percent of it wasn't even corroborated? And we all know that it's, it's the litany of facts about it being prepared by Steele and, and these people uh, and, and paid for by the Clinton campaign. They would go out of their way, if they were being neutral and really going after the Russians, they would go out of their way not to present that to the court. And then if they did present it to the court, they would t disclose to the court that uh, that Steele had been fired as an informant by the FBI, that it was funded as opposition research by the Clinton campaign. They would have made all those connections, but they didn't. And so you have to wonder why. Why did they uh, lie about uh, the redacted material? Why did they play hide the ball? Why did they leak? Something is not right, and that's what makes us suspicious. Even if some things were right, there's still a bunch of things wrong, notwithstanding what Trey Gowdy said. You know, Mark, I, just, just to pile on something David said, because I think this is very important. I'm very sympathetic to Congressman Gowdy's impulse to be protective of the FBI and the Justice Department. I love the FBI and the Justice Department. I worked most of my professional life there. Um, like you, you were a chief of staff to an attorney general. These institutions are crucially important to us. I think the difference is I'm convinced that the best way that we preserve these institutions is we get accountability for what happened and we make sure it doesn't happen again. I, I, my, my sense of things is that, uh, that Congressman Gowdy is concerned and a number of people are concerned that uh, maybe the sunlight, the best disinfectant, isn't the best disinfectant for this situation because it'll be too damaging to these institutions. I, I see it the other way respectfully. I think we have to find out what happened. David Limbaugh. Did Comey leak? He admitted he leaked. Did McCabe leak? Yes. Is there some suspicion that Clapper has leaked? 
Yeah, and they've all changed their stories about whether there was a spy or not. And by the way, some of these guys that have defended uh, Clapper and the rest of them said, well, they wouldn't have divulged this because it was classified, you dolt. Somebody tweeted me that. Well, not at the time we're talking about it. They still maintain that lie way after it was classified. But my point is, who is besmirching the FBI? When you exactly. have a director of the FBI as a leaker, you have yes. the deputy director as a leaker, deputy director has been referred a criminal referral to the U.S. Attorney's Office by the by the Inspector General of the Department of Justice, agreed to by the uh, by the, the the concomitant office in the FBI. I mean, that's not you, me, and Donald Trump trashing the FBI. That is the leadership of the FBI trashing the FBI. Moreover, I, I totally agree with that. I, I have been really disappointed in Comey, and I started out with a neutral opinion about him because a, a person that, that I respect said nice things about him early on. But look at how he's besmirched himself and thus by, uh, by extension the FBI that he, w that he headed. Going out and doing these interviews, saying these uh, things that are untoward, unprofessional things, saying that Donald Trump was morally unfit for office, talking about things out of school to all these uh, MSNBC and all, all these mainstream media outlets, and to sidle up with the, the Democratic and leftist apparatus, uh, Comey has really, I think, disgraced uh, himself and as a result uh, somewhat tainted the, the picture of the FBI during his tenure. Andy McCarthy is a seasoned former prosecutor and you've seen the worst and the best. Devin Nunes comes under attack all the time. He's led the House Intelligence Committee. He helped unmask the unmasking that was taking place. He's plowing into a lot of this. A lot of these preemptive leaks, like in the New York Times, because Nunes and others are on the tail of some of these folks. What do you have to say about Devin Nunes and all this? I really think he's been heroic. And he's, it's been very brave, I think, to go to a place where you had to know you were going to take flack from very powerful, very entrenched institutions and interests. I think a lot of people, well, j just, just to, to be clear on what I think was going through the minds of people who conducted these investigations, they know that counterintelligence matters are classified. Um, in my experience, counterintelligence agents are liable to take outrageous chances and measures that you wouldn't expect criminal investigators to take because they don't expect their work is ever going to be checked. It's never going to be uh, taken apart by defense lawyers. It's never going to be in, in a, a public courtroom. Uh, so they go about their business with a little bit of an edge that they just don't think what they're doing is ever going to be reviewed. If you put on that the overlay that everybody here was ripe dead certain that Hillary Clinton was going to win the election, and this was never ever going to be spoken of, I really think, Mark, that they thought they were playing with the house money in a lot of ways. And what happened was... At a Meaning that they could do pretty much what they want to do right. and never get caught. Correct. Um, and that's when you get reckless about norms like the importance of an incumbent administration not using these awesome powers to investigate its political opposition. I think they got, they got reckless about it because they believed they would never be found out. And Nunez has been adamant that they will be found out. Yeah, and, and not only were they confident that it, it would never be found out, they proactively tried to ensure that it wouldn't be found out with Strzok and Page, talking about uh, when, when, when Trump and Hillary became the clear nominees, uh, Strzok texted Page saying, now, now this, makes, this, this will make us have to accelerate the mid-year exam, the MYE. And she said, of course, I concur, which means they had to make sure that Hillary won and Trump didn't win, obviously. When we come back, I want to continue with this point, and also I want to discuss the big meeting, January 5th, before the Obama administration left office. 